Hello and welcome to Geek Squad Academy's Godot class. We'll be teaching you to build your first platformer via the Godot game engine. For a new project, we go over the new project tab. We're going to make sure it's in a empty folder, otherwise it won't save, so we'll create a new folder right here. And let's create our project. This is we're going to open up to the screen. We need to make sure that this layout right here is what we exactly want. Now, if yours doesn't look like this, you need to go over to these little hamburger icons and then you can change its dock position. So for instance, if I wanted to move this over to the other side, it now is. So let's bring it back over. And then once you have it to the file system on the left, the scene and import in the upper right and inspector and node on the lower right, you have to save this as, and this will always then be this default layout. All right, now we're at the default layout right here, and we're gonna go into the 2D mode. We're going to create everything in the 2D area, which means it's gonna be more of like a side scroller or a platformer. And then we're gonna be designing most of our elements in this quadrant right here, where you see this faint purple box. First, we're gonna create a 2D scene in a 2D mode. Our parent node, nodes are the graphical endpoints of the elements. This is where everything can get built upon. I'm going to add a kinetic body. So we just type it in. Kinetic body 2D is where the physics engine basically comes about. Add another item, which is a sprite. Sprites are going to be your element in terms of what your character looks like. I'm going to add this little character, the Godot character, into our sprite, which will be under the inspector. So let's grab and drag it over to this texture. And now we can see that our character is right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. And it started off at the X, Y axis right here. Now to make sure that everything is tied together, we're going to use this little icon right here, which makes sure that all the objects are not selectable together. So if I move one, it's going to move the other. Let's add a grid to this. Let's configure this grid to be 32 by 32. And calls. Thing next is we're going to save this. We're going to name this world. Now we can move our character into this lower quadrant within this purple line because this is where we're going to start building our world. Next thing next is we're going to code and add code to this. So we go over to our kinetic body. We can either add code by going over to this little scroll with a green plus or we can right click and attach a script. Just create the script and now we are going to change all of this into a different code to make sure that it works for what we want. So we're gonna delete all of this, except for kinetic body. I sped up the typing of the code, but please type the code in from the guide. And then if you have any red boxes, that means there was an error. But afterwards, we're gonna press play, and then it's gonna ask you to pick a scene. All right, so we just written our code. And so what do you think this code's gonna say? Let's say this code is basically going to say that it's bound by the kinetic body, that vector 2 is where the motion is, so up, down, left, right. The physics process is there, which means that it has a physical body and is bound by the laws of physics. And if I input right and press, it will move 100 right. And now, if I press left, it will go the opposite way. Otherwise, it won't do anything. So let's play our game. It may ask us to select where we're actually going to play this. Now, if I press the right arrow, oh, look at them go. And the left arrow, and look at them go. Let's close that out. Now, let's say we want to add some gravity to this. We're going to now change our code to add in gravity via the physics process. And right now it's only affecting the x-axis, which means it's going to go left and right, but we're going to change it to add motion 
to the y-axis. Save our progress, press play, and look at them fall. Now well, we saw their character went to its doom, so let's go back to our 2D, and we're going to add a new one, and this one is going to be our static body 2D. So instead of kinetic, which means it's moving, it's going to be static. It's going to only sit in one spot. I'm going to rename this one wall, and we're going to rename our kinetic body player. All right, so we added our 2D kinetic body and renamed it world. Now we're going to add our sprite, much like we did earlier. This gives it some body. Let's drag our icon over to the texture. Drag our icon over to the texture. And then we're going to transform this mode from the visibility via self-modulate, and we're going to make this black. Remember, we have to tie these together. So let's do this, and let's move our wall under our character. Well, let's see what happens when we press play. Oh no, he fell right through. Let's add something that will collide with that object. And let's save our progress. So we saw the character fell right through the wall. It's because they don't have anything that interacts with each other. So we need to add ourselves a collision shape to both our player and our wall. So let's add collision shape 2D. And then we are going to change the shape into a rectangle. And we have to shape our rectangle to fit our character. All right, we do it one more time for our wall. Create the shape. And now we have ourselves a shape. So now when we play, we will see that it is now sitting right on top. But if I go off, it's going to fall to its zoom. Now one little wall is great and all, but how are we going to do multiple walls? We can do that by duplicating our wall over and over. By using Control D, we can now move our wall and create our own little maze. Let's save our progress. Now when we play this time, character can move around. But what if they want to jump? How can they do that? I'll teach you how to do that next. Now we're going to define how to jump. Because we could saw we saw that we can move left and right, but what if I want to go above these? So we can go over to our script, which can find either the kinetic body slash player, or we can just go to the script up here. We need to find where up is on all of this, so we're going to do that by constant variable. So we're going to do const up with capital letters. Capital capital letters help define what a constant is. Vector two. And they're going to do 0, negative 1. Negative 1 tells them where up is in terms of the code. Next, we're going to have to tell them where the floor is and how to jump. And so we're going to go down to our motion. Then we're going to change this to if is on floor. Whoops. Is on the floor. Action just pressed. UI up. Motion. Now we have to define the Y, which is up and down, equals negative 400. And then we have to define our constant to the rest of the motion. So up. All right, let's save and see what happens. 
Now I press up and look at him jump around. Yay! And one constant, which was up. But we can do that for all the different constants. So instead of writing, say, 100 every time, we can do one consistent variable that we only have to change once versus doing it every single time in the code. So let's add a few more. Let's do constant speed. Constant gravity. Constant jump height. So now we can change these variables that let's say motion dot y plus equals 10. I can now write motion y plus equals gravity. For this I can change it to speed. This will be negative speed. And this will be jump height. Now we can save. And then we can play and see that nothing has really changed, but that means that I only have to change it once versus going through the code every single time. So let's say I wanted to change the jump height once to 500, click save, and then let's see how high he jumps now. See, he jumps even higher because that consistent variable is now consistently 500 versus 400. Now you can explore and change all of these different constants and variables and see what you can do to get it even better or see how fast you can make it. Save and done. Thanks, I hope you had fun.